Okay, I'll look like that. <coughs> Next. So, quick introduction to IX Leeds. It's the first regional IXP that we still have. There were some others, but they've kind of gone away. We, had, we have about three gig of traffic at the moment. Conservatively, there's 11 members. I counted the root server sessions. I think we've got some more in the pipeline and maybe need to fix this stuff. Um, all right. We started with an HP Pro Curve. It was crap. It wasn't even 48 ports because some of them didn't work. <laughs> it was, however, free. Then Lynx very generously uh, lent us an RX, which gave us 10 gig. It, um, it worked very well. It gave us more features. We could actually filter things, for example. Um, but unfortunately, it had four 16 amp cables on the back of it, which kind of gives you a little bit of an idea about why we had to replace it. I think it took about two kilowatts. So we bought some lovely switches from, well, we didn't buy them from Cumulus. Cumulus don't make the hardware. Now you'll have to correct me if I get anything wrong in this presentation. Um, we got the Edge Core 10 gig switch and the Quanta 1 gig switch. I had not heard of either of these vendors before we bought the switches. They just make them in China somewhere um, to, a, to a spec. And uh, then we put the Cumulus software on them. They have the same chips inside them as many, many other switches on the market. And they run Debian. Oh. I like that a lot. What was that? <laughs> okay. Um, the con, obviously, there is that I've never used them before. So I don't really know what they're like. But I thought, we're a small exchange. We can do something innovative. Let's give them a shot. Most switches look like this inside. So they, there's a little variation on the CPU, like, for example, the Cisco 3524s or whatever. I don't, they've started recycling model numbers, but they have a Celeron CPU instead of the PowerPC. When you plug them in, you, you see Grub start, and they, they all run Linux. Um, and they all pretty much have these chips from Broadcom, which work really well, and they're cheap. But the, the main point here is that the chip is the same. So however much you paid for the switch and the and the gubbins around it, the actual bit that's doing the forwarding, it's the same. Why did we do this? I've already sort of uh, covered this. Apart, from, Well, there were some obvious price advantages here, because we're a small exchange. We've conservatively got 11 members paying a grand a year. Do the maths. We don't have massive cash flow. Uh, we got some quotes back. Some of them were for more money than we've ever turned over, so that was obviously out the window. And we wanted to see what it was like. You know, it's interesting. Our exchange design is very, very simple. It's a 10 gig switch and a 1 gig switch connected together with a 2 by 10 lag. The reason for having the two switches is because the Broadcom um, chip in the, the 10 gig switch does actually have, it only has currently, I think, 9 megs of buffer for the whole thing. So if you start plugging people in at one gig, you get what's called a head line blocking problem, where the buffer fills up very quickly. You know, if you're feeding a, a nine meg buffer from a 10 gig port, that fills up in, in less than a hundredth of a second, and it can't empty very fast. The deployment looks like this. Um, this photo is now up to date. There's a few more 10 gigs plugged in. So we did test it. We left it there with some traffic rolling over it, and nothing, nothing bad happened. We thought we were ready. We put them into the data center, and that thing happens, where you've, you've got this thing, and you're thinking, oh, this is great. I'll, I'll walk away from this now. And a day later, everything stops working, and you're just like, oh, no. What the hell's going on here? It crashed in two different ways. Uh, one of them, it stopped working altogether. No packets were being forwarded. The other crash that I saw was um, the CPU seemed to go away. Obviously, LACP stops functioning at this point, but the ASIC continued forwarding packets. So we sort of had this uh, two exchange thing going on where we had the 10 gig members on one switch, the 1 gig members on the other switch, because the LACP had gone down, they couldn't see each other, but they were still peering. We have no idea how much traffic, of course, was going over there because the bit that counts it stopped working. <laughs> so uh, we, we rolled back the software. 
Um, we kept going back, we kept turning features off, it kept crashing, this sucks, um, we have a problem. So what we did was we switched it out for a different switch that was the same. We actually bought two of the one gig switches. The one gig switch was the one that had the problem. We bought two because we wanted a dev switch to try stuff out on. And so we just swapped them over. And I think we've shipped the malfunctioning switch off. It's somewhere in the US now being prodded with a stick to see exactly what's wrong with it. But no, the new switch is in now and it's working happily. Uh, Cumulus were really helpful. Thank you very much, Nat and Co. They even sent us a load of copper SFPs so that we could, in a pinch, move all our one gig members onto the 10 gig switch and uh, you know, deal with the one gig switch whenever we could. But fortunately, we had a spare one and it works. Internally, it's just a Linux box. I've made you a nice little slide with lots of small writing that you probably can't read if you're any further back in the front row. But it's, it's a uname, Linux, memory, it's got a couple of gigs of RAM, and you can see it's like a two core. Uh, I think, uh, whatever it is, PowerPC or something. It works. The config, it's managed just like it's a Debian box with, with 48 ports, or actually 52 because there's some uplink ports as well. You put network config in the Etsy network interfaces, you use IF up and IF down to bring ports up and down, F tool, um, BRCTL to build your VLANs and put ports in it and so on. BWMNG is a little tool that I like using because it shows you all the traffic going in and out of the ports. On yeah, It takes a couple of seconds, I think, to update the stats, to pull the stats from the chip into the um, user land so that you can see them. But it's nice to see, oh, well, there's actually traffic moving on my switch, and it's great. Of course, apt-get, I can edit my switch configs with Vim. This makes me happy. I like Vim a lot. For port security and layer two hygiene. <laughs> <laughs> right, a lot of vendors have made features that they've called port security. And in my experience, they've all had one thing in common, is that they, they suck, they don't really work that well. Um, as an internet exchange, we have people long lining into us for, with these you know, layer two providers. We may not all agree architecturally with some of these choices, but actually, you know, it works, and I think as long as it uh, brings people to the exchange, it's not always a bad thing. These providers do leak frames. For years, we've been beating our heads as IX operators, beating our heads against our own members, saying, blah, 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 you've got this thing, and it's, it's leaked this MAC address. We don't know this MAC address. We're going to shut your port down because it's, it's done this, or we're going to stop forwarding your packets or something like that. But sub that, just... It's only going to get worse because, you know, the, the premium data center space is only going to get more expensive. I'm thinking more of Docklands than Leeds at the moment. But I think we're just going to see people doing this sort of long line stuff more and more. And if we don't sort of address the problem in a, in a better way, then we're just going to get people's backs up. So filter it. We have a lot of filtering options available. It's done with EB tables, which you're probably familiar with from... A Linux box, because the Cumulus software just it pulls this stuff out and it programs it into the Broadcom chip. This is a sample set of rules that we have. This, this is, um, I think, this is from the interfaces file, the first bit, which, uh, as you can see, it's got ethtool to set the characteristics of the interface. puts a nice little description on it, sets the MTU, brings the port up. And then we have the EB tables rules. There aren't any output rules yet because that is, a, I think, a feature request which is currently churning through. So what I wanted to do was create a sort of mutually opposing set of rules so that basically you can't loop it because the packets that come out don't match the rules for the packets going back in. So if you plug it back into itself, pff, nothing really happens. Um, but like I say, we're just waiting for that feature and then, then we'll have that. Got any questions? Is that a good thing? Okay, people are here, obviously. Okay, thanks very much, Tom. <laughs>